Welcome to the ForexProform.com YouTube channel. I'm Valentine, your host and content creator. Today, we have a special guest, Lisa, who has been making impressive strides in the trading world. Thank you for joining us today, Lisa. She currently has a 50k funded account. Lisa, please introduce yourself to our YouTube community. Hi, my name is Lisa. I'm from Denmark. Uh, I'm a 31 years old uh, and I have uh, tr traded since uh, September last year, so it's not so long. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, it's a new world. Perfect. We two came into <laughs> the uh, skincare business. I have a beauty salon. Uh, mm -hmm. So now I try to, you get, get, you will not get rich of this business. So now I try to do something else to get a little more extra income. Okay. Uh, interesting. Interesting. Cool. So you already told us a little bit about your background. Mm -hmm. Um, let's start with your background and how you got introduced to trading. What was it or who was it that introduced you to trading first in September of last year? Uh, I've been uh, into drugs, uh, introduced to trading in the summer last year, but I have to see what is it, uh, is it for me or is it not, or mm -hmm. how many money do I have to put inside or something like that uh, before I, I take the step. Uh, and it was a friend from another company, uh, 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 another network marketing business mm -hmm. that introduced uh, me to this uh, because we have spoken about the, that there not was so much money to earn in the other company. So we have to look for something else. And uh, she has find uh, the trading uh, mm -hmm. and introduced for me. Um, and then I take uh, the step in the September last year and get a demo account and could see it was funny and start to find out uh, what to do or not to do, or uh, something like that. Uh, and then uh, in the spring this year, I uh, pay, uh, get my uh, funded account. Uh, yeah. Perfect. That sounds really interesting. And yeah, you're in this business for a short period of, period of time. So it's really yeah. crazy that you already have a 50K funded account. You did a great job with that. Um, Let's talk a little bit about your trading journey and your experiences. Can you describe yeah. your trading journey so far? What have been some of the key milestones in that past year that, that you're on the journey now? Uh, yeah. Um, in the start, it was uh, just for fun and uh, to find out what to do and not to do. And uh, gave a lot of gambling. Uh, yeah. Because I know I'll, I didn't know what I go I'd do and I'd, and just have to learn it uh, and um, yeah a lot uh, it, it was good it was a, a demo account because I lose a lot of money but I win also and you know uh, so so I was when yeah uh, I uh, I mean it was too long in the minus I start a new one because okay. I, that. Uh, that the numbers look nicer for me. Oh yeah, I are... know that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and um, yeah, so so I I, I want uh, after yeah the, those months I I decided to take this the shot of the of the a founded account and uh, I lose the first one. Uh, I had it in a week and then I mm -hmm. lose it. On a bad day, I and then I think no more. That's not for me. And then like maybe a week, I bought a new one yeah. uh, and uh, take a smaller step with that and uh, and a lot of like, lower risk or uh, uh, yeah. So. Okay, yeah, sounds good. I think the losing first is a really important thing to to learn and, and take your things out of it. Because at the end of the day, what happened to me was I was just at the same as you. I was gambling on a demo and I was mm. doing really good profits, but it was just gambling. It was no yeah. good trading analysis. I was just gambling, but I made yeah. good profits 
And after that, I was, my ego was so fixed and I thought, okay, now I can really do good money. And I really put in what I had left for my savings. It was like five figures. I put it in <laughs> and I lost it in like a couple of minutes. I, I yeah. know it exactly because I traded the US 30 and I was just over leveraging and I lost five figures in 10 minutes and I was sitting there looking at my phone and I was like, what the hell is going on? And after that, I, I thought I'm going to quit too. So as you said, when you had your first account, thinking about that, that is just not for you. I was the same and I was <laughs> thinking about not doing it again. But in my opinion, it's yeah. one of the most important steps to go ahead and to learn and to take your your learnings out of the situation, in my opinion. And it's yeah. for me, it was necessary to lose first in order to make profits after that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you have to, to learn that you you didn't have to make the revenge uh, trades all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Now I lose, I have to gamble again because I have to win back the money. I just lose and you lose a lot more. Uh, yeah. It's up in your mind. You have to, to change. Yeah. And that's the thing what I didn't understand when I first started out because it's all as you said, it's all in here. It's all your yeah. mind. And one of my favorite quotes is the consistency you seek is not in the markets, but in your mind. And when I first started out, I was just fixated on doing good analysis. And I thought if I am a good analyst, I'm going to make good profits. But that was just not the case. When I look at my trading plan now, it's it really is basic. It, it is some yeah. some concepts there, but it is really small. And I'm now really focused on just high probability days and on the days when I'm when my mind is peak focused because I know that if I'm consistently doing my outlooks, my analysis, I'm going to make profits. And if I stick to my risk management, I'm doing profits as well. And I'm I, I just uh, realized a couple of months or like a year ago that I need to heavily reduce my trading frequency. And after that, my profitability went through the roof with that. And I think that are some steps on your way to becoming a profitable trader that you need to understand and that you need to take in your trading plan as well, because your trading might be totally different from mine with your trading plan, your, I don't know, uh, entry strategy, whatever. And that is the thing, over the years, you get the experience and you know exactly what it is that you're looking for. And what is even more important, in my opinion, is you know exactly when not to trade, because that is even more important than just putting money on the line, because capital preservation is the number one priority when you're trading. So yeah, I think that are some some key key things to get out of years of experience in my opinion when you're trading yeah absolutely okay now let's go a little bit about in your trading and how your trading look like what trading strategies do you primarily use and why do you prefer them uh, yeah i right now i have taken a break break from trading because i have uh, have decided to study uh, to find out uh, what is risk management, what is uh, uh, yeah all all the the um, the you um, all the things that we uh, look on when we make us uh, or analysis uh, analysis analysis yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and why do I look for that and uh, what is a pip and what is a gap and what is a yeah. Um, um, yeah, the, the fair value gaps and um, like that. Fair value uh, gaps, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to know why do I look after those things yeah. and what do they mean? I have heard, heard them a lot, but mm -hmm. what do they actually mean? And yeah. and now I'm, I found some, uh, one, uh, some, a Danish trader on a higher level. They're... Um, they're, they're uh, uh, um, start, uh, uh, teaching people in it, so okay, I, I study him. Uh, before I have, have listened a lot of on English, yeah. and uh, it um, it gives a sense, but not enough to I yeah. really understand 
-hmm. So right now, I really, really want to learn why I do the things I do. Uh, yeah. So, so that's why my focus is right now. Uh, so I don't lose another con uh, account, but actually can get money out of it. Yeah, that's that's a good thing, and you're doing it at the right time, in my opinion, because at the moment the markets are just consolidating. When you look at yeah. dollar or you look at euro USD, it's just consolidating, and I think times like these are very important for you yeah. as a developing trader to do your studies. And what I can encourage you, or I can give you a good tip, what I did in periods like this, I was taking my trades that I took prior to that, I was looking into my journal, and I was exactly studying why the markets did trade like they trade when I took a loss. And I was yeah. thinking about how I can define my system. What was the timing when the market started to move? and Like, what levels did the market move? And these yeah. are things, if you're really going deep into that study, you will learn a lot about your trading plan. And in my opinion, when you start out with trading, you definitely need to get good education. When you have a good yeah. base level understanding of trading and how the markets are behaving, I think the rest and the most important work is doing weekly outlooks, doing daily outlooks. What is it that you're looking for on the charts? And yeah. putting your notes on that down and and at, or in the evening doing a recap on what the market was doing versus what it, it what it was that you were looking for initially. And by yeah. doing that, you're going to learn a lot more than by just watching someone teaching you how to trade yeah. quote yeah. unquote. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. the market is the best teacher in my opinion. And I learned so yeah. much from good mentors, but these really small things were just inside the charts yeah. and i think the, the answers are already learn... yeah oh sorry but i have to learn what what is it i'm looking at yeah before i can see it because when i just sit and look at the analysis the, the charts just go the candles mm -hmm. and that and i think what am i looking at it's red yeah. and green you know, yeah. up and down but uh but now the teaching have done that it's oh okay it's because of that and it's uh, okay it's it's it made more sense for me now yeah so yeah that is that, that is important. i yeah. think and and some years uh, as you said the, the market is, isn't good right now i i have seen that so that's also the uh, one of the reasons that i would say okay I'm, that's now i have to study and take the break from the trading and so on a week or two or three maybe i start again Yeah, yeah, and that's that is one of the most important skills you can learn as a trader to know when to sit still. Because when I look at the charts, I look at like the weekly or the monthly time frame. When I see consolidation there, I already know that my chart time and my trading time are like less than one hour a week. When I yeah. did when during the really good times, I'm doing like five or six hours a week. Now yeah. at the moment, to be honest. Today was the first day of the week where I was looking at the charts and I saw dollar and I immediately closed the charts down because yeah. I have so much going on around the charts and yeah. when when I when I focused on the things outside of the charts my profitability became even better because I know what it is that I'm looking for I know the high yeah. probability timings And then I'm going to look for a trade. And if these things are not presented to me, I'm just not looking at the charts because I have a habit of, if I'm looking at the charts, most likely I can frame a trade, but it's not that high probability. That's the thing. In my opinion, if you look at the charts, you will always find something to trade off. That's yeah. just the thing and how the markets are behaving because they are engineered to do stuff like that. And yeah, yeah. yeah, so I think for now, if you're really focusing on getting good education and getting a good system in place, you can really set it up for the rest of the year when the good market periods are coming back and there is a lot of volatility coming into the markets again. And I think when we are there, your understanding is going to be on a good level to, to yeah. do the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah, I thought so.
Okay, perfect. Um, what are the trading pairs that you're looking at? Is it like indices? Is it uh, Euro USD? No. Is it dollar? Yeah, I started off with the, the Forex uh, 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 US, uh, Euro USD and uh, yeah. UPP USD. And uh, so I looked a little bit of uh, gold mm -hmm. and uh, it was funny for a period, but uh, you have to be uh, careful. Yeah, of course. It's the yeah. best. <laughs> there are yeah, some and I like the... yeah 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 really <laughs> roller coasters yeah. in yeah if you don't take care uh, and also the silver i found that interested too so i have also traded a little bit of that but that's mm -hmm. also a roller coaster you have to be careful yeah so a bit bitcoin also but yeah you also have to be awake and uh, and and that was because uh, we were in a, a moment where we, oh, it's bad. We don't can trade in the weekends. But, yeah. ah, Bitcoin, you can trade that. Hmm. Yeah. But it's, you also have to take a break uh, and and have a weekend. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that's so important. you also chose a uh, run after the trades, you will lose. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. You made a really good point because... In my opinion, if you're looking for something to trade on the weekends and there is no break of the charts, um, I think you will mess up your psychology a lot. Because yeah. at the end of the day, trading is, uh, or you don't, or you can't underestimate it what happens with your mind when you're when you're mm -hmm. trading. Because if you, let's say you take a loss on Monday or Tuesday, you're down for the week. It's really yeah. hard to get out of the drawdown. And let's say yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're getting into the drawdown with over the weekend and there is no break or no time that you can take off to really study what you made wrong or learn out of the mistakes. And you're doing trading on the weekends as well for Bitcoin yeah. or some cryptos. And in my opinion, it's really not good because you need a break and you need to reset it and just study what you made wrong and go in again with a new yeah. fresh mind on the week. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolute. So, um, you already mentioned your risk management. Let's talk a little bit about that. How do you approach risk management in your trading? Um, I, I, uh, after I lost the first account, I really set my risk low. Uh, and trade uh, one point uh, like zero point uh, uh, the lowest uh, risk you uh, mm -hmm. to and and then I'd also not uh, earn a lot but I'll, I earn and that's the important for me and and uh, and I also go in on my account and see how much do uh, uh, did I have afford to lose today and set yeah. my loss after that. Uh, so I'm sure that I not lose more than I have decided to lose today. Uh, uh, that uh, had helped me a lot after I started that, because in the start I just uh, take down my stop loss. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, lower, yeah. lower, 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 get down, because I cross my fingers and hope it will turn again. And also I lost a lot of money on that. Yeah. Um, so and and so I um, I in the start I also have uh, a lot of trades on one time, mm -hmm. and so on the gold and on the silver and on the forex and I can have four or five six trades uh, on one time, and I cannot uh, I cannot uh, over um, overlook it all overlook and, it, yeah. uh, and yeah. then it all get, yeah yeah and all, and then it all go to minus because I I, I cannot. It's again yeah. in my brain. I cannot. Uh, yeah. So now I have decided with myself that I only have one trade at a time. Uh, yeah. Because so 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 I I can get fo focused on that. That is a good decision. Yeah, of course. Because yeah. if you're doing like five or six trades at a time, you can't focus on one trade no. of them each. And that is the thing. Just do one trade. Use zero point five percent risk or even less yeah. if you're not yeah. comfortable with it and just run with that because yeah, at the yeah. end of the day in my opinion 
if you're doing too much trading, the most important thing you can do after you take a loss is to study that loss. And yeah. when I took too many trades, what happened to me is I was sitting in front of my computer and I was studying the losses and it was so much work needed in order to dissect each of the losses there. And in my opinion, it was just too much. And if I reduce my frequency to, for me personally, one or two, or two trades max per week, most likely yeah. around Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday, yeah. if I do that, I can really make sure that it's high probability and that the study that I'm doing on these trades are high probability and um, let's say I can get the most out of my time that I put in for the study and yeah. You can learn a lot better than if you're doing like six trades or something like yeah, that yeah. on a time. So absolutely. you did a good decision on that. Yeah, absolutely. Be because it it it, uh, it 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 go crazy if you do the other thing. It you you uh, and you will not learn off it because you will get revenge trading out, yeah. out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Instead. And I think if, if you just do one trade, you're calculating your risk, let's say 0.5% yeah. risk, then you accept it. No matter yeah. what the outcome, there are three outcomes. You can do a winner, you can do a stop loss, or you can do a break even. And yeah. when you yeah. put on a trade, you 100% need to accept it. If yeah. you fear losing that amount of money, the risk that, that you're using mm -hmm. is just too high then I yeah. can tell you to decrease your risk because it is just too much. And that is the thing, accept it. Mm -hmm. And after that, the rest is up to the markets and you really can't do anything about it. Prior yeah. to the, the trade execution, there is everything in your hands. You can calculate your risk. You can think about if you want to take a trade or not. Mm -hmm. But once you take a trade and you put in your position, there is nothing you can do. And that is one thing that I needed to accept to don't focus on, on the outcome. Just know that there will be one out of these three outcomes yeah, and absolutely. the rest doesn't matter. That is the yeah. thing. If you just focus on that, let's look at a series of 10 trades and you have a profitability of, let's say, 50% win rate mm -hmm. and you do a one to, one to two or one to three risk to reward over the series of 10 trades, if you always use the same risk, you're going to be profitable. And yeah, yeah. there are losing trades. And that is the, yeah, yeah. the the hard thing with trading because let's say you win five out of these 10, there mm -hmm. can be five losers back to back to back to back. Yeah. You just need to make sure to use the same risk because what happened to me after I took, let's say two losses back to back, I was increasing my risk instead of decreasing it because I wanted yeah. to make back the money that I just lost. Yeah, and exactly. that that is the thing. Every one of us is going to have a losing streak, and it really depends mm -hmm. on how you act on that and what risk are you using. Because that is the difference between a good and a profitable trader and someone that is just gambling and putting in trades that are with a random outcome, hoping yeah. to make some money out of the markets. Yeah. Let's talk also, a little also, bit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, don't worry. Go on. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I also have learned in this journey is don't trade when you don't have time to uh, to look after it. Uh, yeah. Because something said, uh, sometimes said something uh, in start and forget it or get busy with something else and answer. Yeah, it, it lost. Uh, so, yeah. so that's I uh, really learned that. Don't trade if I don't have time. Yeah, that's a that's a good thing because let's say you do a weekly outlook on your weekend and then you can really think about, okay, when do I have available time the next week ahead? What what can I do? And if you frame something around the, that time, you're totally good because let's say you're, you have your business on, on a Tuesday and you don't have free yeah. time. You can't put on a trade because you don't have time to manage it. Let's say there are some news releases while you're doing something yeah. with a customer and you can yeah. manage your trade. And that is one of the um, yeah, most negative things I had happened to me myself as well, 
because if there is no time you can't really manage it properly so for me it's like doing an outlook when do i have time most of the times wednesday or thursday something like new york london close session whatever and if i don't have time i don't look at the charts because i because i don't get tempted to to put on a trade and that's as easy as it can get (laughs) yeah um let's talk a little bit about challenges and overcoming them did you have some hard challenges that uh you faced on your journey and can you speak a little bit about on how you overcame them and the 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 biggest challenge is is stop the uh uh, reward uh uh, risk to to, reward yeah you know no um the revenge, the, the revenge. Ah, yeah, tree. yeah, okay, yeah. okay. To stop that, because yeah. I, I, I didn't, uh, I, 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 all, all, all the time thought that now you're taking my money, now I have to get them back, and and yeah. and so I lost a lot more. So so um, that that had been the biggest uh, thing to overcome that I not should do that. Yeah. And and I'm not sure trade when I'm not uh, have the time. Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah. And um, I think I I think the revenge trading is something that is a little bit ego driven because for me yeah. it it was like I was doing a trade and I was placing a bet on euro USD going higher. Let's say I lost, mm-hmm. and. I just immediately took another entry because I thought, okay, maybe it was just a stop run and Euro USD is going to trade higher. I was just yeah. too focused on putting my point of view on the markets. And at the end of the day, yeah. the market is going to do what it wants to do. And you yeah. can't do anything about it. What I can give you is to make sure to put the stop loss on a place which is going to be an invalidation level for your trading idea. Because yeah. if you do that, if the market is going to stop you out, you need to accept the loss and move yeah. on. Yeah. And I've... what helped me a lot is to put myself on a daily um, risk limit. Let's say it's two trades. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do that on days yeah. where the market is not behaving that good. I'm just doing one trade. If I have a loss, I just move on to the next one on the next day because yeah most of the times if you're taking another entry after you already had a loss the outcome is going to be not that good and that is what i can say with experience because what happens after a loss is most of the times just a negative experience as well because you have a negative thinking pattern and you are in that in that mindset of make of knee of making the money back that you just lost as you mentioned yeah. and that is a hard thing because your mind is going to play tricks on you while you do that uh, and absolutely for me the best thing was to just as i said accept the loss move on to the next day and be fine with being in drawdown for the day yeah. that is totally yeah. fine and totally normal and yeah. what helped me was i was giving myself um I was thinking about what I want to do and I was giving myself the promise to just don't do dumb things on the charts like over trading or revenge trading or whatever. Because if you want to make a career or a business out of this, you really need to act like that. And when I was doing revenge trading or whatever, it's Mm -hmm. not what I wanted to do because that are just negative emotions that come up and i acted on them instead of viewing it as a professional thinking about okay when is the market going to trade higher or when is it high probability for me to do something if there is no high probability for me i'm just going to leave it out completely and if i take a loss i just accept it and move on because that are that is part of the game and you need to accept it as well yeah absolutely. absolutely okay perfect Lisa, the last question is going to be about your future goals and your aspirations. Looking ahead, Mm -hmm. what are your goals and aspirations in trading? Can you explain for me what aspirations mean? 
Um, what do you what do you want to achieve in the future with trading? Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I want to uh, to get a good income, a mm -hmm. good uh, side income, so I can yeah. uh, can live the life that I want and not the one that I have uh, money for, mm -hmm. but the, live the the all the things I want to do. Uh, yeah, that's that's the goal with the trading, to get a. Uh, a better life, a better car, a better uh, vacations. Uh, give my kids some things they want, and not always yeah. always to say no. That's uh, that's the big thing for me. Yeah, uh, that it give me an extra income, so I can do the things I I want to do. Yeah, yeah. sounds great. I think that's yeah. really important. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Is there anything you want to add? Oh no, I cannot leave. No, not right now. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing your insights and experiences with us today. Lisa, it has been a pleasure having you on this channel. For our viewers, if you enjoyed this interview and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the forexpropfirm.com YouTube channel for more interviews and trading tips. Thank you for watching and happy trading. See you in the next video. Thank you.